Just like we do, trees and plants need certain minerals and nutrients to survive. There are some that they need in trace amounts like calcium and magnesium, and some that they need a lot of. We call those macronutrients, and the main ones are nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Unlike plants in your garden or in a farm field, wild trees and plants have to figure out a way to get those nutrients on their own. Of those macronutrients, the one that's often the most elusive is nitrogen. And it's weird because nitrogen is actually like one of the most abundant elements on Earth. It's all around us, it's in the air, it's everywhere. Problem is that most nitrogen on Earth is in a form that the trees can't use. And so in order to use it, the trees have to manufacture this organic nitrogen into inorganic nitrogen. Almost without exception, trees actually rely on bacteria and other microorganisms to transform that nitrogen into a form that they can use. What some of these trees actually do is they inject these things called root exudates, these organic chemicals into the soil that feed this community of free living bacteria and fungi around the root that we call the rhizosphere, the world of roots. By doing that, they subsidize these communities of microorganisms that then turn that nitrogen into a form that they can take up. There are also a few species of trees and plants that can manufacture their own nitrogen. The most famous of these are the legumes, plants like peas, that have this evolutionary relationship with a certain kind of bacteria called rhizobium. Rhizobium and those plants have co-evolved together, and those plants have structures called nodules on their roots that actually house colonies of rhizobium bacteria so they can transform that nitrogen in-house. I'm here at the clearing in Bear Island, which is this plateau of sand and gravel that was created 13,000 years ago when this was the shoreline of this massive glacial lake. Sands and gravels are really dry and acidic, and in these systems, nitrogen is specifically limited. And so what we have are communities of trees and plants that have adapted to produce their own nitrogen because there's no other way for them to get it. There's two different species of plants that do this at Bear Island. The first is sweet fern. Sweet fern is actually in the bayberry family. It's not a true fern, but its leaves look like fern fronds. Like the legume, sweet fern keeps a beneficial bacteria on board. This one's called Frankia that allows it to manufacture its own available nitrogen. The other species that does that here through a mutualism with that same Frankia bacteria is this one, lowbush blueberries. It's pretty amazing to realize that there's nitrogen all around us and plants need it. And the only way that they can get it is through relationships with microorganisms. That process of transforming unavailable nitrogen into available nitrogen is so vital that we have multiple species of trees and plants that have actually evolved mutualistic relationship with other organisms, bacteria, to harness it.